Hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Uh, today we'll be continuing the development of our AI using the AI uh, behavior trees, except this tutorial won't really do anything at all in the behavior tree. It's just going to build on an existing system that we already have and actually cover some other interesting points such as sockets and adding a mesh to a character. So you can see my development AI here is actually holding a sword that I quickly threw it together in, in uh, Google SketchUp. Um, so we're going to go ahead and show what the end result of this is. So when the uh, AI locks onto me, it's going to come and attack me and swing its sword. And you see those numbers in the top left? That's my health. That's decreasing as the sword hits me and only when the sword hits me. Um, so you, there's actually some detection going on around that sword. You can see that, that uh, collision bounds volume around that. So let's jump in and find out how we can do this. Um, so we're going to start in the zombie and inside here we're going to need to head on over to the viewport and we need to add a component of type static mesh and we're going to attach that to our mesh and we're going to name this sword okay so that looks a little bit silly right now so jump on over to the mesh and double click on the skeletal mesh over here and what we can do with this goblin now is select its skeleton and whoops uh, what we want to do inside the skeleton is choose a place for the sword to go. So obviously the hand is good, so we can select perhaps this area here and we can add a socket and we're going to name it sword socket. Okay, so with the sword socket selected we can add a preview asset which will be our sword that we've imported and obviously that doesn't quite look right so what we're going to do is we're going to mess around with this and position it in a place that looks right we can scale it we can rotate it we can do everything that we normally would be able to uh, and that's just going to help us set the scale here so i think he's going to have a short sword he's only a goblin um that's more of a dagger though really i'll extend that out a bit and slot that into his hand and say that that looks pretty good so we'll save that and now back in here inside the uh, AI's construction script we want to attach a component so we're going to drag off here and atta type attach to component mesh so the mesh is the target which is our sword uh, actually sorry I've got that wrong the parent is the mesh and the target will be our static mesh so we'll get a reference to that and the socket name so remember we just created that socket named sword socket we're going to want to type that in here sword socket so that's the socket at which this is going to be attached so we can go and check that out I'll remove my development AI from the world add in a, uh, a goblin one and you can see it's supposedly in his hand but not quite so we can adjust this inside the zombie on the viewport if you select the static mesh and just adjust that so it's in his hand this goblin is not very good he's sort of being a bit rude with that but we can compile that hit play and it should now be in his hand so that looks a lot better so when he comes up to me now he's going to swing that sword and we actually have collision enabled which is why it sent me flying so that's the next thing we're going to need to change so back into our zombie select the static mesh and scroll down on the right over here and change collision from block all dynamic to no collision. So we're going to compile that. Now we need another component, so up here again, add component, and this time under collision, we want a capsule collision. And we're just going to put this capsule around his sword, so somewhere in the middle, and then we can adjust the capsule half height here to cover the entirety of the sword. Lovely. Okay. So we've got a collision thing going on um, and what we actually have here. So this is the attack thing that's called um, when we just play the animation. We play the animation, we wait five seconds and we switch back to the blueprint. So what we're going to want to do is add a variable. Uh, it's going to be of type boolean and we're going to name that swinging or rather attacking. Compile that and we want to set this twice. So control C, control V. And basically in the gaps here, we're going to set attacking to true. 
So this is while he's playing the animation. And after the animation is finished, attacking will be set to false. Okay, so now we've got that set up, we can select our capsule, right click and add an event for the capsule under collision and add an add on component begin overlap. So basically when something enters this um, component here, we're gonna do something. So off this, we want to come to a branch and the condition is going to be attacking. If we are attacking, we want to cast to the first person character. And this is basically checking to ensure that we're only hitting the first person character. If it's anything but, this cast will fail. Um, and if we do hit the first person character, what we want to do is, well, we need to take the health away. But to do that, we need to give them some health in the first place. So, over here, I've created a integer variable, uh, just named HP and set the default value to 100. So I'll, I'll take you through the steps actually, we'll remove that variable and we'll remove the code that goes along with it. So we're going to create a variable over here of type integer, we'll name this health, we'll compile the blueprint and set the default value for health to 100. So we need a custom event, and we're going to name this take damage. Now our custom event should have an input which we're going to name incoming damage. Okay, so the incoming damage variable will allow us to specify on the other end how much damage to actually take. So we're simply going to set the health to health minus the incoming damage. So we'll set that like that. And basically you could build onto this so you could have him play like a, you could have like some interface over here that makes blood come on your screen or you could have him make a groaning sound because he's just been hit with a sword or any other type of thing you want to build off on this. When you take damage, this is where you'll continue building that idea. So, now back onto our, um, our zombie over here. So we can close out the first person character now. So as the first person character, we want to call the take damage, which is basically the damage that we were, the think the, sorry, this is basically the event that we've just set up. And we're gonna set the incoming damage to be 10. So each time you take a hit, it's gonna take 10 health off you. So if I can just fire up that first person character blueprint again. And what I'm gonna do on the end of here is add a print string, just for debugging purposes. And I'm going to print out my remaining health just like that. So that's converting an integer to a string. So we've added a socket, we've added the sword to the socket, we've attached it to the zombie inside the construction script and we've put it in the correct socket. What's left to do? Well, not a lot. Not a lot. So we should hit, be able to hit play now. See our goblin come running at us, chopping his own head off as he does hit us and take our health down depending on how many times that sword actually passes through our character component. So you see if I just sort of glance away from it, let him swing and move away, he won't actually get the hit. Even though he does the full animation, the zombie doesn't actually get the attack on me because the sword didn't hit. So move away. So I, using this I can dance around him and try and get away from his attacks. But if I stay stood still, I'm going to take some serious damage. So obviously you have the forward slash and the back slash of the sword which is going to take that extra health off me. So that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. We've added taking damage now to our uh, characters. So in the next tutorial, we'll probably be taking a look at applying damage to them and when they're dead, uh, making them ragdoll and have funny effects all over the floor. Uh, possibly applying some decals and etc, etc. So yeah, stay tuned for those. Make sure you subscribe if you want to keep up to date on the content. If you haven't liked this video already, please go ahead and do that. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. As always, guys, I'll see you on the next video.